Hi there, and good evening. Welcome to this week's edition of Ready to Run, a live show focused on youth candidates for mind, one political parties who are running for office in the 2019 elections. My name is Samson Itodo, and this show is brought to you by Yaiga Africa, the Not Too Young to Run movement in partnership with Channels Television and supported by the European Union. The much-awaited presidential and national assembly elections have come and gone. Winners have emerged, losers are counting their losses. But at the end of the day, what is really important is whether Nigeria wins. And we believe that Nigeria should win. We congratulate all those who ran and won their elections, especially the young men and women. We look forward to working very closely with you to deliver on your campaign promises, because that's very, very important. We also celebrate all the young candidates um, across the country that were brave enough to contest um, and were not elected. Um, we urge you not to lose faith in the process. Um, 2023 is not far away. And with us, we stand with you always in solidarity. The poor turnout of voters in the February 23rd election was a major setback for our democracy. And as you can see on your screen, we'd like to ask, where were the young voters? Um, if you look at turnout for the elections, um, turnout was about, according to INEC, 35.7%. Uh, and that was lower than 2015, where we recorded 43.6%. And look at the total number of registered voters, where young people are at about 51.1%. And this is what data tells us. INEC says there were 84,004,084 registered voters. Out of this number, 42,938,000. 558, that's 51.1%, are young people. Now, how many people turned up to vote? Only 29,364,209 people got accredited. And at the end of the day, only 28.6 million people voted. Now, what happened to young voters? And for every young voter who is out there, we've got another opportunity on the 9th of March, where we'll be going back to the polls to vote for governorship and state house of assembly um, candidates. Um, this is another opportunity to make our voices heard and make our, make our numbers count. Because as young people, we are more than numbers. Let's look again at what you know, data tells us about youth representation. Because on Saturday, that's 9th of March, we're going to have young people who are running for governorship as well as the state house of assembly elections. According to a fact sheet produced by by Yaga Africa, um, there's also the percentage of young people. They, we, it, it shows that there's an increase in the level of youth candidacy in the 2019 elections for State House of Assemblies. So on Saturday 9th of March, how many young people will be contesting? Out of the 23,316 candidates, 7,772 are under 35. In 2015, youth candidacy stood at 21%. But in 2019, it increased to about 34.2%. The governorship elections, that's March 9th governorship election, has a total of 1,059 candidates, of which 104, 104 of them are young people under 35. And this represents 9.8%. While 239 of the 1,042 of the governorship candidates um, are young people, and that represents 22.9%. And that's the graphic on your screen. If you look at the State House of Assembly, we've got about 14,138 candidates. Out of this number, 5,914 are young people. And this represents about 41.8%. That is the data as of today. And these are the number of young people who will be featuring in on March 9th, governorship and state house of assembly elections. Before I introduce my guest today, I'd like to tell you that those who will be featuring on today's show are amongst this figure, and we get to meet them right after this break. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> Welcome back from that short break. In case you're just joining us, this is Ready to Run, a TV show that focuses on youth candidates who are running in the 2019 elections. You can be a part of this show by sending your tweets and your comments and your questions on Twitter using the hashtag Ready to Run. Ready to Run is a hashtag on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. And you can also follow our handle Ready to Run NG 
on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. And sometime on the show, we would like to take your comments. So let's get to hear from you. Joining us on this special edition of the show, we've got young candidates who are running for State House of Assembly. It's our pleasure to introduce Tonye Dan Isokariwe. Um, Isokariwe. Isokariwe. Yeah. yeah. Who is a candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, ABGA, um, and is running for the Municipal Area Council Chairmanship elections in the FCT. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Now, Tonye is 31 years, so he's within the youth age. Now. Oh, you're now 32. Oh, okay. He's 32. But you're still within the youth age bracket. <laughs> also with us on the show is Marcus Samuel Wiener, who is a candidate um, of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and running for State House of Assembly elections, um, Peru Chonge State Constituency of Gombe State. Yeah. You're welcome to the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. And last but not the least, we've got Sewuse Bem, um, who is a candidate of the People's Redemption Party, um, running for State House of Assembly, Boko East. Constituency. Boko East constituency um, of Benue and she's 21 years. Guys, welcome to Ready to Run. 29. Oh, you're 29? Yes, yeah, she's, she's, she's 29. So you're one of the beneficiaries of, of the Not Too Young to Run Absolutely. Legislation. Maybe let's start with you. Okay. Why are you running for State House of Assembly? Oh, thank you very much, Samson. I am running for the State House of Assembly to make a difference, to create a legacy, and to render services to the people. At the end of the day, I want someone to stand up and say, she came, she saw, and she delivered. You delivered what exactly? Because there are a lot of people who are delivering several things. But let me be very specific. What are you delivering? What do you intend to deliver to the people? I intend to deliver the money, exactly what they wanted me to do, the perfect legislature. The perfect legislature. Yes, sir. So why, why are you, why, what's your motivation? Um, is it because the people want this or there's something you want to deliver to them? Because you've got to be very specific. Absolutely. It's something I want delivered. And it is very what, simple. What is that? Honesty. Honesty? Yes. Is honesty enough? Is that what your people want? Yes. Why do you think they want honesty? Because... Everything, there are so many legacy blueprints that politicians come on board with. They are so perfect if you read through. At the end of the day, they are not implemented. But the last time I checked, I'm not sure there's any legislation called honesty. So what, what does that, what does that mean? Know. <laughs> Because if you're here. a lawmaker, correct me if I'm wrong, is there a legislation yeah, called no honesty? No way, it isn't. So what It exactly? is the way to carry out my mandate, I will do it honestly. Okay. Yes. Samuel, why are you running for office? Yes. Uh, I am running for office because I discovered that legislation is not understood by most people running for office. Mm. Mostly uh, candidates just contest because of the fruits of uh, government not for uh, service delivery or for protecting the rights of their uh, constituents. Mm. There are lots of things that happen in government uh, that directly affect constituents. But those places that don't have uh, a, a good representation, they fall out of what happens in government. Their rights are not protected thereby leaving them with lots of uh, uh, issues. So what are you going to do to protect the rights of your constituents? Yes. Uh, firstly, if elected. Firstly, if, ele if elected into office, I will uh, be sure my governor considers uh, my constituency in virtually all the projects he intends to do, because uh, he came to campaign and he made some promises. Mm. And we will sure push that to, uh, to the latter. But what will you do? Is, is it just your, just your governor? But what will you do as a legislator? Yes, as a legislator. In the State House of Assembly for Gombe State, what exactly will you do? And what will the people of Chonge constituency actually look forward to if, they, if they're going to vote to you on Saturday? Okay. Okay. 
we did a need-based assessment of our people, what they need, their basic needs, and the problems mm -hmm. they've been encountering. So, uh, what are these problems? Mostly it ranges from uh, road networks, electricity, portable drinking water, schools. Their schools are in bad shape, understand? And uh, a lot of that kind. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to come back to both of you because you are running for legislative elections. Maybe we, sh we shift gear to the one who is running for an executive position yes. um, as a chairman of the Abuja Municipal Area Council. Tonye. Yes, sir. Why are you running for the office of the chairman of AMAC? Um, thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Um, first of all, when in 2015, after the elections, a group of young people and I came together and began to look at some of the challenges we have as a country. And we began to um, look out for young people who we feel have some form of character, you know, some form of competence, to begin to push them into the governance space. Mm. Um, and some of the challenges we realized that, you know, Nigeria as a whole has is, you know, the challenge of leadership. So in dealing with Nigeria's issue or challenges, we felt that the only way to start dealing with that is from the grassroots. Because the solution to those challenges will start from the bottom up. And that's why I decided that, you know, in trying to change that mindset, let me run for the position of chairman. Because Abuja is where I live and where I have been for the past 20 years of my life. So Abuja, to me, I felt if we get it right at the local level, which is also the center of, you know, Nigeria, we will to, you know, um, cascade it down to other local governments and take it up from there. What would you do differently from the current, from what the current chairman is um, doing or has done? In going around, one of the things Three that I've realized, things. one thing I realized was that the people were not included. They didn't know that, you know, there was um, a local council. What they, what they knew was a council that just harassed them and, you know, asked them for money. Okay. So what we want to do, the first thing we want to do is to change that. We want to include people in the business of governance. Okay. The second thing we want to do is we also realize that um, there's a multiple, you know, um, taxation policy that the present area council, you know, runs. We want to unbundle that. We want to be able to bring, we're trying to introduce technology into that system. So number one, what that technology will do is to limit the, you know, the loopholes and the lapses of people paying their taxes and all that. Then secondly, what that will do also is to limit the human interference okay. in collection of those taxes. taxes. Yes, and the third thing we want to also look at is carrying the communities along in what they're doing. So we set up, um, we said we're going to do a community development fund where the area council will set aside a specific amount of money, you know, to for the for the local communities for around the Amak, of the for local. the development of those communities. Because a lot of times How those many communities, communities do you have in Amak? We have roughly about 140, 144 communities. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll come back to you. So say we say. Now, yeah, you are running for State House of Assemblies in Benue State to represent Boko East, yes. if, if I'm if I'm correct. That's Boko. right. If you're voted into office, what are the first three priority legislations or bills you would like to sponsor? First and foremost, I would like to sponsor a bill about child abuse. Oh. I remember the case of Ochanya, who was abused and she died as a result of the abuse. We are still crying and wailing about that. And nothing has been done about that. Actually, nothing has been done really about that. So I'm going to look at child abuse. And when I look at children, when they're going about the streets, hawking when they're supposed to be in school, I don't like that. So I'm going to look at child abuse bill. Then I'm going to look at the um, seniors bill too. When the seniors work, provide services for Nigeria and retire, nobody remembers the services they rendered to the nation before they retired. So I'm going to put them into consideration. Then I'm going to sponsor another bill about substance abuse because that is um, degrading and shortening the lifespan of the youth and even lessening their capacity and productivity. 
So, child abuse, seniors, and substance abuse. The age abuse. and the elderly. Exactly. As well as drug abuse or substance abuse. Yes. So this will be your first three priority legislations. That's right. What saying. about you? What will be your first three priority bills that you'd like to sponsor if voted into office? So surprising. Um, the first is going to be health. Uh, health of under five. Five years down to zero. Then uh, the retirement age, their health. Uh, basically, in other climbs, you find the aged taken care by government because they've contributed their quotas and so on. So their health, they say a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So, so the health, health of our children, I want to sponsor a bill for uh, free medication okay. to... Because uh, I was just going to ask, when you say you're sponsoring the legislation on health, mm -hmm. what exactly is it? Yes. Improved access to health care mm -hmm. or... Free medication, five to zero. Okay. Free medication. Yes. Yeah. What, second? Second. Free medication for the retired age. Yeah, that's the one bill, Upwards. on the yes. health. Yes, on the health. Yeah. On the health. Then uh, bills that have to do with uh, food security. Okay. Because uh, we, mostly our people are farmers, but this same uh, food mm. they produce they hardly have uh, uh, access to a processed form and, of it. And was it third, third bill? Yes. Because yes. your constituents are watching and they'd like to really know what exactly you're going to do for them. Um, so what would be the third bill you'd like to sponsor? Yes, it has to do with uh, the youth, the uh, youth empowerment. Youth empowerment. Okay, so I'm going to ask three of you one question. Yeah. Yes, what makes you think you are qualified for this office you're running? Let me start. Seriously? What makes yes. you think you're qualified? What makes me think I'm qualified is I have been studying the situation. I am well aware of um, where my immediate environment and I have um, given services to this country. I have um, been working prior to this. I was working at a rural health facility and I was mingling with my constituents somehow. Where? That is um, PHC, Tsekucha, somewhere in, in Benue State. Okay. Yes, in Benue State. So I, by working, I was studying these people. I was unaware before this call came in, I knew exactly what to do. So that, so by this is just the experience that you have and you think you, it makes you qualify Not just to this. be a legislator. Not just this. What else? What else is, I have read so much, and when I compare our standard of living and some other places, I discover that we are lagging a lot behind. So reading, studying people, and interaction with people have given me this vision, and I feel I have the capacity to do this. You think you're prepared? I think I'm prepared, and I know you, I am prepared. Do you think you will win? Yes, I know I will win. You think you will win? Yes. Samuel? Yes. Are you prepared for this? Very, very. Why? Why yes. do you think you're prepared? I, I, I know I'm prepared because I am uh, innovative. I'm a problem solver, and the, my constituents know. I, I discover their problems. I go there to help in my own way. Mm. So, uh, and they are so in love with that. Okay. You think you'll win? I will win. Are you prepared for a chairmanship? Oh, definitely. Why? Um, Why do you think so? First of all, I'm a humanitarian. I'm also um, a policy expert. And in my various thinking, you know, in my work ethics or the, my various work environment, I've handled various leadership positions that has given me the opportunity to lead and not just lead people at the local level, at the national level. So I believe that if I've been able to do that, mm. I should be able to handle a local council effectively. Yeah. Do you think you would win? Oh, of course, we're winning come night. You're winning? Yes. If you don't win, what will you do? We'll continue. We, we don't stop. We keep pushing. Okay. Yeah. One last question, because we're running out of time. Yes. And that's what will be your last message to your supporters out there? who are watching this show and are following us, whether online or on different social media platforms. 
will be your message to your constituents? Yeah. Um, my constituents know very well that uh, we came with a message of truth, telling them the real situation that is happening down there. And uh, we know their issues. And we are ready and committed to doing the right thing and providing solutions to their problem and pushing it to government in, in, in terms of legislation and bills. OK, so we'll say your last message to your constituents and those who probably who will be voting tonight. Yes. Boko East constituency, here is your Yasekoma. I want you to understand and to know that I have capacity, I have knowledge, and here you are going to vote in someone with credibility, transparency, accountability, and I am going to deliver. I am not going to practice the stomach infrastructure practice that have been going around. I am going to make laws that will make your lives better. I am going to hold the government accountable okay. to carry out the projects they have promised to carry out. Thank, Thank you. you. And lastly, Toya. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that, you know, Abuja guys, you guys need to come out, you know, in, on the 9th of March, which is next Saturday. The elections, you know, is taking place across other states as, as like the gubernatorial and state assembly elections. But for FCT, we have the area council elections. So this is an opportunity for each and every one of us to come out and vote for ABGA, vote for me. And I believe that if we're able to capture the local council, we'll be able to deliver on the promises we've said we, we want to deliver. We've gone to also notarize every promise, you know, that every man, everything on our manifesto, that will to hold us accountable for the things we say we're going to do. So I believe that if, we're, if you give us a chance and you come out en masse to vote for us, oh. we will deliver on those promises. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, guys. We wish you all the best um, in, your, in your campaigns and, and in these um, elections. In keeping faith with our tradition on this show, we've got a pledge, um, which is a ready-to-run pledge, which is a commitment that you make um, to refrain from hate speeches and ensure that you mobilize your supporters um, to shun every form of electoral violence or, or malpractice. And viewers, the um, ready-to-run pledge is on your screen. That's a pledge that all our guests on this show would have to sign because it's an instrument of accountability between we at the Ready to Run movement as well as our, our guests. So if you, if you agree with, with the content, please um, pick the pen and just, and just sign. So you just write your name. Just sign. So I guess the signing the pledge is a pledge of accountability, integrity, and patriotism. Uh, we consider ourselves as young people as Nigeria's new tribe. And so we must provide uh, a different form of leadership for our country. Um, this is the Ready to Run show. Uh, we'll be back after this short break to continue with the other segments of the show. Please stay with us. Mm -hmm.